Hey guys, what's going on? Tonight's video, Down in the Dungeon. This is it. This is how I became the anabolic doc. It all started down here, dungeons like this. When I was a young man, 13 years old, started lifting weights. No one really knows why. You just pick up your first weight and it feels good. You go back for more. That's when you're a big fish in a little pond. And then it grows. You go into a lake. Then you go into a river. Then you hit the oceans. And that's when it starts. And it starts right here. And it never changes. I've had a lot of injuries. I know I'm not going to be as strong as I was, say, 10 years ago, maybe. Maybe five years ago. I'm always going to make a comeback. You never know. That's the amazing thing. And none of this is for money. And none of this money can buy. The reality is I'm 56, I'm healthy and I'm humble, but I still love to bench. When you lift, you lift heavy, you get hurt. There's also equipment to make you stronger and there's some controversy on it. These are some of the tools of the trade, if you will, that not only help me stay strong, but motivate the shit out of me. When I smell this stuff, it reminds me of walking up the stairs of Hercules Health Club, 1984, hearing those weights moving and knowing that I got a lot of work to do, horse liniment and nose torque, old school nose torque. You ask, how can you bench 500, 400, 300, 900 or 1,000 like some of these guys? Well, you have to get a mindset. An old school, there's nothing better than this right here, folks. You know, you just put the chalk on and you're feeling it. You're becoming part of the weights. You're ready to move. Nowadays, you gotta wear wraps, right? Because my joints are shot. This stuff really helps. So without this stuff, I wouldn't be able to bench. Now, this is a secret, guys. Don't hate on the shirts. Don't hate on the gear and the equipment. This has been around since. June 1st, 2013, called myself the metabolic doc because you couldn't go see the anabolic doc. Thank God that came out of the closet. And this did too, so this is you'll see this working today. And then you got the old school lifting belts, and of course, got some backup Ben Gay. And it's always nice to put under the nose some Tiger Bomb for some of the aromatherapy. Of course, you got music. <laughs> Lifting my whole life as a teenager and getting stronger and stronger, it was something I realized that's all I wanted to do. Even though I knew I had to go to college, I had to quote unquote be someone, get educated, but as long as I could lift weights, as long as I can go to the gym. And man, back in those days, you're talking the 1980s, the gyms were hardcore, the gyms were real. The gyms were bench, squat, and deadlift. And the best equipment you had were the dudes you were training with. And then you realize that you can get injured. You also realize maybe you're not the strongest guy in the world. Now back then, this is about 1980s, people really weren't doing steroids until they were in their 20s, 23, 25. That actually is true. And I didn't do steroids either until I was probably about 23. I did my first cycle. I tried Anivar and Winstrol, Winstrol V, injectable Winstrol. Unbelievable. I was so nervous about it, I actually took it to Europe. I didn't take it in America because I was so anti-steroid where I would squat, deadlift and bench and yell and scream and parade on like a madman in the gym and threaten and yell at steroid users in the gym. I was one crazy bastard. So how could I do steroids? I thought I'm a fraud, can't do steroids and I started realizing that a lot of guys, the real strong guys in the gym that I respected of course. Most of them, at least, were on steroids. And it was a very interesting underground back then. This is the 1980s. So I got the steroids, I went to Europe, and I did it for probably about one month, and uh, flipped out because my ball started to shrink. And that was my first time doing steroids, and I said, this is not for me. 
but I kept training really, really hard. And then over the next couple of years, battling with going on and off steroids, I probably did a few more little cycles and I realized that this desire to train and just to be in the gym and be so strong and to love it was never going away. So I had to do something professionally about it. So I went on to get a master's degree in exercise physiology at Long Island University, which was quite a good place. After my master's degree and running a few health clubs, I realized that I wanted to do more academically. So I dropped back out of life, went pre-med at the age of 30 to Syracuse University. My plan was to go to med school. And that was the end of the road. Ever since then, I was destined to go to med school and I got into medical school in Mexico, ended up, which I'm very proud about, by the way, and transferred back to New York Medical College in a program called the Fifth Pathway Program at New York Medical College. And still not the anabolic doc yet, still just training hard, going on and off some steroids. And then about the age of probably 30 or so, early 30s, uh, going into residency training program, uh, knowing I was going to be working 100 hours a week and most nights probably not sleeping 24, 30 hour shifts. Back in the day, I felt very tired and actually depressed and uh, felt the things that a lot of men feel that I treat now and uh, realized myself that I need to be on testosterone. So I've been on testosterone since my early 30s. So I'm living this dream with you guys. Soon after being in medical school, getting through medical school, residency training, and being an internal medicine doctor, I realized that there were a lot of my friends that were living on testosterone because they couldn't get off. We didn't know about anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism at that time. And uh, what was a cult following started off growing and growing of men locally in the Northeast anyway, coming to see me. And I became the anabolic doc in 2009. I think everyone knows I started running for muscular development and uh, it's grown to what it is today. And today, I still want to lift big. I still won't grow up. I still want to bench more and more, but I realize I can't and I've suffered because of it. So I have equipment to help me lift. <laughs> Actually, and you'll see that. And I always just dream of coming home most nights and lifting. And of course I mountain bike and I stay healthy. And I've had, I've been very lucky to see the future of maintaining a man's health and vital signs and using technology for protecting men that are on steroids because it's the right thing to do. And of course men on testosterone so you can live a long life without suffering any of the medical complications. Uh, it allows us to enjoy life and so after my knees blowing out, my back blowing out and everything else, I can just bench. And I don't bench like I used to, but it's beautiful to think that maybe one day I'll come back on the bench. You know when you're benching and you start at 135, you go up to two and a quarter, 315, up beyond that, 365, 405 and more money it, it's like nothing else matters it's all you got to think about and that's the only thing that matters in life is how much do you bench sure you good job thank you so in the end of the day I'm a 56 year old guy definitely not the strongest guy in the world never been the strongest guy in the world but I'm still in the game and I feel great and that's why I became the anabolic doc, to protect men like us, yes, that are using steroids that can get hurt, even on testosterone, and even men that are just not on any drugs at all, but they still just wanna be badasses and they wanna stay strong and healthy as long as they can. That's why I studied medicine, internal medicine for men. So this is my liftoff man, Zach, but a big shout out to my man, Robbie, who just came out of the operating room getting his shoulder taken care of so he can come back and bench big. Because guys like us, we just want to keep benching. We just want to stay strong and healthy. Thank you so much, everyone. Shout out to Robbie, my real lifting partner. No, that's just, that sounds bad. That's like, <laughs> shout out to my hand.
Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Shout out to my handoff man. No, good job, Mike. Okay, wait.